Hi guys, so this is a quick update and my views on the new and up and coming patch of 6.2.3 for World of Warcraft. So first off the bat are the new time walking dungeons that have been introduced. So now as well as running Burning Crusade and Lich King time walking dungeons, we can now run through the old Cataclysm dungeons at maximum level. These dungeons include End Time, Grim Batal, The Lost City of Tolver, Stone Core, The Vortex Pinnacle and Throne of Tides. Along with these, they have added the Magister's Terrace from the Burning Crusade and the Pit of Sauron from Wrath of the Lich King. The Pit of Sauron was the second dungeon in the Frozen Halls and it was the continuation from the first dungeon called the Forge of Souls. The Pit of Sauron then led on to the last dungeon in the zone by the name of Halls of Reflection, where you had to escape from being chased by the Lich King. Now all three of these dungeons were linked, meaning you could run them right after finishing one another, and they were really fun dungeons to do. So it seems a bit strange that they have only included the second dungeon in this. We already have five Lich King time walking dungeons, so not adding these as a trilogy does seem a bit strange. But this is still a good thing, as having more content to do at maximum level is never a bad thing, even if it is just upgraded all content. I'm sure a lot of people will still have fun doing them. There will also be a vendor near the Cataclysm portals in Stormwind and Orgrimmar during the Cataclysm time walking events. This vendor will sell new, modernised Cataclysm gear and some new toys for us to add to our collections. But the best bonus for us doing these time walking dungeon runs is the chance for a new rare mount called the Infinite Time Reaver. This has been added as a random drop from any, yes any time walking boss. I am guessing the drop rate will still be low, but having the chance of it dropping from any boss is a much bigger incentive to keep on running the dungeons. Let's just hope the mount is set to a personal loot drop and not a need or greed roll. Ok so next up is cross realm mythic raiding. This is being introduced and it's what I'm most excited about if I'm honest. As my guild is simply not big enough to take part in mythic raiding these days. So having the chance to be able to see all of the raid on a mythic level is very appealing to me. And it will hopefully give myself and many others something new to experience in this expansion. No doubt though there will be the regular link curve achievement requirement or maximum item level requirement which can be annoying at times but let's see how this turns out. On to Mythic Dungeons. Mythic Dungeons now have a chance to award items ranging from item level 685 to 725 in 5 item level increments with a progressively lower chance as the item level increases. This is kind of amazing as getting a piece of 725 loot is better than some mythic gear from Hellfire Citadel. So that's a great incentive to run these dungeons. Also if you are maybe struggling in raids then this is a great way to boost your gear to help with progression. Mythic dungeon bosses now have a chance to drop a new heirloom trinket that will scale up to level 110. So no doubt this will definitely be worth your while trying to obtain as when Legion does come out Having a trinket that scales up as you level is only going to be a benefit to you whilst leveling your character. So don't forget about this guys and make sure you try and pick it up. A quick note on Baleful items as they now have a chance to create items ranging in quality from level 655 to 695, again in 5 level increments, with a progressively lower chance as the item level increases. This I'm guessing is just to try and help you level your alts a bit faster as I am sure a lot of people will have much better gear by now, but maybe not. Also remember 695 is still the maximum item level, so using an empowered apex fragment on these won't level it up any further. So another thing I'm super pleased about in this patch is that Valor is back, and it will be once again used to upgrade your items. So your crafted, dungeon and raid items etc can all be upgraded using Valor. You can earn Valor in a number of different ways. By completing the first random heroic of the day, running mythic dungeons, completing weekly bonus events, all except for the pet battle bonus event, completing a raid finder wing for High Mall, Blackrock Foundry or Hellfire Citadel for the first time each week. To upgrade your items you need to visit your ethereal vendor in Orgrimmar, Stormwind, Stormshield or Warspear and you can then upgrade your gear by 5 item levels at a time. This will cost you 250 valor each time and it can be upgraded twice, so a potential boost of 10 item levels. 
I'm really pleased that this has been reintroduced as it is a really good way to help smaller guilds or guilds that are still having problems on certain bosses in raids to hopefully overcome these issues and progress. It also gives just people something else to do. I mean, let's be honest, who doesn't want to be more powerful? I think Valor coming back will be a very welcome thing and I think it will be popular amongst pretty much every single player playing the game. Quickly on to PvP. There will be Season 3 of PvP. I will admit that I am not a big PvP player as I prefer the PvE and raiding side to the game. But for all you PvPers out there, the new warmongering aspirant gear, I think that's how you pronounce it, scales up to item level 715. The combatant gear scales up to 730 and the gladiator gear scales up to 740, which sounds pretty good to me. No doubt there will be lots of awesome new PvP gear out there, and let's be honest, the PvP sets look way cooler than most sets in the game. So I'm sure everybody who likes to PvP will have a great time with this. Okay, so just a couple of quick things. Certain classes such as the Death Knight, Druid, Paladin, Shaman and Warriors are getting damage upgrades in certain spells, which I'm sure will please a lot of people. If you wish to see what these are, I'll pop the link in the description box below, so just go and have a look. And finally, if you are lucky enough to be able to kill Archimonde on heroic difficulty or higher, you will then be rewarded with a mysterious dark fragment that begins a quest. After completing this quest, you will be rewarded with the Grove Warden Mount, which was originally supposed to be a store mount, I think. And this is a pretty cool looking mount, so congratulations to those that will be able to get it it's definitely worth trying to obtain. Well that's about everything on the new patch. Thanks for watching, I hope everybody enjoys the new patch, please comment, like, share and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.